Hey, good afternoon, folks. This is uh, TrueCharts.com. We are going to give you a pretty short uh, video today, um, going over some of the key things. So, hope everybody is doing well. And uh, you know, summer is coming, so we are getting ready for that. Quite a interesting market we are expecting. So we'll get right into it. So uh, stay safe and get vaccinated. Okay. So let's get in right into it. Uh, today is May 9th. So uh, let's look at what we have been talking about here. So uh, you know, we've been talking about this risk is high. So obviously, when you have this extended market, you know, you, the risk is always going to be high, right? Because the downside is very um, not limited. I mean, in the sense that we've been bouncing off key support levels, uh, primarily we'll talk about why. But we still think this risk is high in the big cap top, uh, you know, the top names in the NASDAQ because they've been going sort of sideways. They had a false sort of breakout is what I consider. And then the cloud software companies seem to be breaking down. So be very careful if you own many of those. So I would be very watchful of those. So I think you know the names, Coupa Software, Viva Systems, you know, Splunk, um, Okta, Crowd, Strike. Uh, many of these have very, very high multiples. So uh, keep an eye on that. Okay. Uh, we've been very bullish on the overall market conditions for the Dow. We've been saying that the Dow will go up and that seems to be happening very well. We had predicted 32,000. We crossed that. We crossed 34,000, which was our next target. Now our next target is 36,000. We are almost at 35,000. We think 36K is very within the, um, you know, stro stone's throw away. So we are expecting that to happen um, hopefully by the end of the month, actually, we think, because there is still too much bullishness. And uh, even though institutional investors are selling, um, we think the target is 36,000 the short term and 4,500 for the end of the year for the S&P 500, okay? Uh, with some normal pullbacks. And we'll talk about where those normal pullbacks happen. One of the key things I want to talk about, you know, we talk about this, like, why do you need to check a chart? Well, you want to be educated about looking at a chart and why you want to look at a chart before you do any buy or sell. You want to figure out if the stock's in a downtrend, uptrend, is it at support, is it breaking out, uh, you know, is it going sideways, are you just seeing small uh, noise type movements. So you want to be careful where you buy them, if you can buy them at a cheaper price, so that's the best way to do it. And you can put limit orders uh, and also when to sell. Uh, picks for next week. We'll talk about that in the next section. We have some interesting picks that we'll be going long next week. Uh, we'll show a covered call writing example today using I use Thinkorswim. Uh, I also have another account with Merrill Lynch. So I use them also quite a bit. Um, and so I, I'm just going to show an example of that, how you make money off of covered call writing. So we'll look at that. One-on-ones uh, -on -ones are available for $99 an hour. So if you're ever interested, give me, just send me an email. Um, and we'll go over, you know, your portfolio, what you want to talk about, any technicals, questions, port, you know, anything you want to talk about, not a problem. Again, follow us on at TrueCharts. I do uh, put out some um, recommendations there. And then please consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. And we are providing not financial advice, just analysis. Okay, so... All right, and then you can always contact me. That's my email address, truecharts.com at gmail.com. Okay, let's get into it this week. We'll try to keep the video to 15 to 20 minutes. So let's see here. Okay, so we'll talk about the markets as we normally do. So we've been talking about how the NASDAQ uh, and the uh, Dow is looking. So let's just quickly get into it right here. So we always show this chart on the Yahoo uh, page. So let's look into it here so you can see here let me make sure the refresh is working i typically focus on weekly charts because um and daily i look at it briefly but i also like weekly charts so you can see here uh obviously the s p has uh, broken out and we talked about this several times in our previous videos you can see where the support level is uh, we had a brief sort of moment here uh, that looked like it was going to break down but sure enough it bounced right back up and ever since then, uh, this line, which is the 20 week, has been its critical support line you, and, and 13 week. And the more critical one, if you look at here, is 13 week. It hasn't broken 13 week yet, and yet it keeps trending up. And you can see here, it's at 422. I think it's going to break out to the upside. And the reason I'm saying this is if you look at your MACD, it's still positive. Your RSI is not peaking out. 
um, here. So you can see here there was a peak here in the RSI. It's not even reached that level yet of 80. And you can see here this was another space where it went above 80 and then it pulled back. So this is telling me we are probably going to get even more higher RSIs with this market going up. And let's look at the DJI. <coughs> uh, DJI. And you can see on the DJI, we've been talking about this trend line. It hasn't broken this trend line and it keeps going up. We talked about this breakout. We said, okay, this looks like it's going to keep going higher. And you can see here for the Dow, the critical support has been 50 feet, this, this line here. It bounced nicely off of that. And then recently it's been its 20 week and then it's trend line here, this particular trend line. So you can see here, it was a very strong close this past week. We think this is going to keep moving higher. Uh, I mean, I'm just seeing relentless buying in stocks. It's just like nobody cares uh, anything is that anything bad is going to happen. And with the economy just coming back, I mean, if you think about it, it's just a replacement economy, right? It's nothing new is happening. It's comparisons to last year, which were very timid in the sense that majority of the economy was closed. Only the online people were work, doing most of the work, even though other companies were working, but a lot of the restaurants and these big, big uh, other companies were shutting down. So you can expect that they're all coming back and you know, it's just it's just been uh, literally incredible is what I, the word for it is. And you can see it looks very, this is a weekly chart again. You can see is how extended this is. And again, the RSI is still not peak. You see here, this RSI when it peaked was above 80 right here. I think we are going to get this type of move up very fast. Like it's still in that motion, but still even with this big move, we are still not above 80. And it tends to pull back you can see here on these peaks when it touches 80. So there's still a uh, substantial upside to this is what my projection is. And then we talked about that. Let's look at the uh, NASDAQ. So we are bullish on Dow stocks. That's our main motto of today. So bullish on Dow stocks. The NASDAQ, on the contrary, is looking going sideways. Right? You can see here it's been going sideways. It had a huge move up. You know, you can see the RSI was sort of doing a divergence, which is just moving down. Your MACD is moving down. So this tells me that the NASDAQ, I mean, you got to think about it briefly a little bit. It can move up also because it's at this 20 week support. It bounced right off of that. Look at this support, 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 and again, support. So if it doesn't break 20 week, then I'm still bullish. Okay. So that's the key thesis here on the NASDAQ. So 13, 13,400 is what it looks like. If it closes below that level, 13,433, then I would say, okay, there's risk on the downside to the 50 week, which is 12,000, okay? So keep an eye on that. We are still bullish on the overall century, but this looks negative from a technical point of view, right? You've got a lower MACD on a uh, weekly basis. So that's what you want to be careful of. Okay, so let's get to the next topic. What are Again, the main reason is primarily the Fed has not stopped buying bonds, right? I mean, they are printing $120 billion a month. That's almost $30 billion or 40, yeah, $30 billion a week. Okay, they're still buying bonds. I mean, I don't know when they got into the business of buying bonds, but this is just like crazy. And what we, and it is being reflected in the assets. Houses are going, house prices are going up. Um, commodity prices are going up. Um, you know, stock markets are going up. It's just absolutely, literally amazing. And, and it's all liquidity driven. There is no other risk. And everybody is believing that the explicit Fed put is in place and they have not shown any indication of raising rates this year. I suspect what you're going to see is March next year is when they may come and say, Hey guys, we think the markets really mark the mark. The economy is really, really hot. We need to do something. So we are going to either stop the QE and raise rates maybe in the June quarter. So they may make that announcement and they'll be very explicit about that. So for 2021 to all the way to next year, I expect a booming market. That's my prediction. And I'm just going to stay with that prediction. So it's better to be long, even though shorts are working in some cases, uh, which have worked for me, some of them. So, but I close those very fast. Like I'm, if I'm short, I just close it. I make money, I get out of it. I don't stay short for a long, long time, okay? 
All right, so let me go through the picks for this week. So let's look at the chart. So first one is Caterpillar. We've been talking about Caterpillar for the longest time. I love this stock. I still love it. It broke out on Friday and I'm going long. So I'm, I, I really like this stock. I think this stock is breaking out of this consolidation. I think it could easily rise up to 270, 275. So, and you can see all the indicators are moving up. So this is a long, okay? So I'm going long this stock. Next one is QDEL. Now this is an uh, interesting speculative stock and I'll show you why, okay? This stock on Friday moved $12, okay? But look at what it did. It closed above its 10, 20, and almost it just barely closed above its 30. It what looks like 30 was 121. It closed below its 30. So it tagged its 30 day moving average and it closed. But there was huge volume. MACD is going up. Look at the high on the stock. It's going as high as 260. It's down over 50%. So I think there's a huge opportunity here. I'm going to keep an eye on this. Uh, I think it may run into some resistance at the 50 day, but I really like the stock from a technical perspective other than, you know, their earnings were okay. They were not that bad. Actually, they did pretty good. That's why the stock was up. So I'm just going to briefly show you the chart. It's look at how high actually 300 was the high. It's at 120. So uh, I think this could easily bounce back to 180, but I would keep a stop at 100. Okay. That's uh, just about 20% down from this point. Okay. So if you're interested, I'm thinking of buying some, so I may keep an eye on it. Uh, energy stocks. So energy stocks are perfect at this time because the economy is opening, right? And you can see they have been moving for quite some time. Let me show you Exxon Mobil. This was one of my trades we'll talk about in a second. Um, look at this beautiful move up consolidation move up. Okay. And then you look at the weekly chart on this, uh, and I have to log into my own account which is interesting. Okay, so let's do that. And let's look at the weekly chart. This is the weekly chart. Okay, look at it very carefully, folks. This is going to this 200 day moving average, which is where is resistance is, which is at $66. So there's about four more dollars in the stock minimum. I think it will tag 70. Okay, there's at least 10% move in the stock. I bought it, I own it, I'm st still long Exxon Mobil. Okay, so we'll talk about that. What was the next trade? Oh, BBY, Best Buy. I like this, economy is coming back, retail stocks are doing well. Let's look at it technically. Look at this, consolidation for the longest time. Looks like it wants to break out. Look at the weekly chart. I love this weekly chart feature, it's amazing. Uh, I think it's going to break out of this consolidation mode and move up. So it moves very fast. If you see here, whenever it breaks out, it moves out very fast. Now, the only thing you want to check and make sure is, does it have any earnings coming out? So I want to make sure there's no earnings. So let's look at BBY. We are going to have this feature. Okay. So be careful. May 27th is its earnings. Okay. So that's where you want to just want to be careful about. Okay. All right. So let's look at DD. That's my other pick. I'm going to go long. Uh, so DD is DuPont, I think. Uh, let's see, DD, is it DuPont? I don't even care, yes, DuPont, okay. Look at this, beautiful chart, nice consolidation, nice cup and handle, look at its weekly chart, and this stock is going up. I think it's going to 90 to 100. That's my target. So there's about a 20% move in this stock coming. So that's one on my list to buy. Let's see, TJX is my other one. TJX is on my list. Also look at it, breaking out. I bought this actually, I sold it uh, when I made a little money, but it's breaking out. Look at this long consolidation. Let's look at the weekly chart. Breakout, okay? This is hitting new highs. This is telling me the stock is going up. So keep an eye on it, watch the earnings. So critical there and Delta Airlines, I like it. Airline stocks are doing well. I own airline stocks, so I'm telling you upfront. This I think is going up to the 50 day, which is at about 47.60. So be ready, it's hitting resistance, but I think this is kind of like a double bottom. So I think it may break out to the upside. Look, RSI is moving up, MACD is turning. This is a great stock to buy, okay? So that's one. And then cruise line stocks. Okay, so I like, I own cruise lines. I own Carnival cruise lines. So I like this stock. I still own it. 
I think this is going to break out to the upside. I have Royal Caribbean. I own that stock too. I think this is also going to break out to the upside because Carnival are coming, uh, cruise lines are coming back. Okay. All right. I close my Home Depot short. That stock has been on a relentless move up. So I don't like it. So I close my short out. I briefly made some money. So I close it. See, you can see here consolidation to 20 day took off. Wow, it's just like technical trading is just working like a miracle. I mean, I have never seen the market be so perfect on technical trading. So that's why I tell you guys to look at charts uh, all the time. Okay, and trades we did. We talked about Exxon Mobil. I'll show you the other stock I'm long. Valero, I love this stock. They have a great dividend. They're still paying a $4 dividend. I own this stock. This is going up. Um, and if you look at the weekly chart, the high is like amazing. Okay, so let's look at this chart. It is at its critical resistance 200 day if it breaks here it's going straight to 90 and then 100 okay so there's a 20 percent no actually what yeah 30 yeah 20 percent move almost more than 20 percent 25 percent move in the stock available to uh to make money okay so that's on our list and then let's see what else we got oh ups did well we, we i should have never sold it that was a mistake but anyway i made money so i'm not too worried about it I made money in three different accounts, so I was okay. So it was as long as, and look at it, gap up, huge volume, okay? And I showed you one interesting thing we have in our report section, we have this gap up report. So you don't have to go far, just to, you can just look at gap ups. There are 43 gap ups on Friday. You can just sort by volume and you can see what stocks gap up. So you look at here, ship, this gap is a gap up. UPS still gapped up again on Friday. Crocs gapped up, looked like, I think there's something wrong. Yeah, this was a gap up, I can tell. This is not a gap up, why is this wrong? This looks wrong, something is wrong. I think the reports have not run. So let's look at this. You can run this here. So there is a gap up option here, and you can say start scan, and you will see a gap up report. So it takes a little while because gap ups take a little while to calculate. So let's look at it. And in the meantime, while it's doing that, uh, covered call writing example, let's go through that um, covered call writing example. So let's say you own a stock and why I, you know, tell you about covered call writing. Let's say, for example, you own Boeing right here. And you're saying, hey, you know, I let me look at the chart for Boeing. Okay, so let's go look at the chart for Boeing. And we'll pull up the chart for Boeing. And you say, let's see. I like Boeing, by the way, so I own that too. So uh, just to let you know, this is going up. Okay, look at this RSI below 30. Everything is moving up. This stock is going to 30 days, so about 240 to 50. So you know this stock is going up. So you'll say, well, I don't need to write the call because this stock is moving up. Because if I write the call, I'm guaranteed that's going to be called away. I'd rather wait and write the call because I know 50 day and 30 day are merging right here. So I would just wait. Right. I know all the indicators are turning up, so I won't do it. OK, so I would look at, let's say, for example, uh, let's pick another stock. Let's say I can't pick Caterpillar. Let's say let me go see if I can find another stock. Let's say Amgen. Uh, no, I don't like it. Let's pick Amgen. OK, let's pick Amgen. OK, let's see Amgen what it's doing. So I look at Amgen stock. I look at the chart and I'll say, OK, let's see what Amgen is doing. Okay, so Amgen looked like it ran into resistance. So it's got, you can see here, it's got a lot of resistance around 260. So let's say I bought the stock here. Let's say I bought it at 235. It's at 254, right? I'm going to go, well, I think this is going to pull back or go sideways. Why don't I take advantage and write a call and collect some money as credit? Even if, because if I bought it here and I know I still want to hold it, I can collect money on the calls. So I would go here and I'll say, okay, so let me look at the options window and this is the options window and amgen is open so i can say i can click on the stock here i can just say sell uh there is a spy custom where did it go sell covered call okay so this is the way you do it so 14th may right so we are looking for the 255 call uh, so 255 call is not that much premium. The spread is too much. You see, it's 69 cents to $2.45. So there's no point to doing this trade because the spread is too high. You want much tighter spread. So the spreads on Amgen are very, very high. 
I suspect because they're probably going to issue a dividend or go X div. So I wouldn't do the trade. I would say, okay, I don't want to do this trade. I would rather go find something else. So let's say you own BBY. We were just looking at Best Buy. So we'll go look at Best Buy here and say, let's say you bought the stock. You know it's going up. You say, okay, you know, I want to make some money quickly. I'm going to buy, let's say, at 122.34 on Monday morning. Okay, let's say you put a buy order and you bought it here. And you say, oh, I'm getting 61 cents or 61 to 76. So if you click on this number, it'll show you what they call the mid price. Okay, that's where the market will typically execute is around mid price. Okay, so if you're predicting the stock is going to 125, there are two ways to do it. One is you can buy the stock and sell this call. Or you can wait and say, okay, I'll write the call when the stock moves closer to 125 and then I'll write the call. So let's just say you bought it and decide you want to write this call. So you can expect 68 cents. 68 cents means for 100 shares, you get $68 credit. Okay. So the way you do it is you click the right button here and you say sell. And you can see here, there is a covered stock. You see this covered stock. What that means is what it will do is say, tell you, what the price is with that, um, you know, call price included, what your, what your trade is, what your cost base is going to be. So if you bought it at this 122.34 minus 68, it'll come to about 121.65. That would be the mid price between, so it calculates bid ask for both and averages that down to the mid price. So what I would do is say, okay, I'm going to buy the stock. I'll say buy, it'll let me buy the stock. So I'll say, okay, buy hundred shares and I would execute my border and say confirm and send. And then what I would do is say, once I finish that trade, uh, because the trade is free to me, right? The stock trade is free to me. So it doesn't matter if I do it with the stock or after the stock. Then I'll say sell single. I can say sell single. And you can see here, it pops up this thing, right? And you want to put a limit price. So you can, you go up here and you say 68, you see? So you're putting at the mid price and you say confirm and send. So the moment that executes, you'll receive your execution and confirmation that it's sold. And basically what that means is you are expecting a $2.70 and $2 move plus the 68 cents. So you would make $3.38 basically is what you'll end up making. So that's $338 just for this week. Okay. If you did these type of trades like every week and generated $250, that's an extra thousand dollars a month. Okay. Just on covered calls. That's why I emphasize covered calls so much in my, um, you know, presentations and whenever I present my videos. Okay. So that was a good example and indicator for the week. Let's talk about momentum. Okay. How is momentum calculated? So I pulled up the exact definition of momentum. So market momentum is measured continually by taking price differences for a fixed time interval. So to construct a 10 day momentum line, simply subtract the closing price 10 days ago from the last closing price. This positive or negative value is then plotted around a zero line. So you can decide if you want to calculate momentum over 10 days, five days, 20 days, whatever that may be. So you, this is the how it gets calculated, V minus VX, okay? So the latest price, so I, I wish they would have used C minus CX because they're using closing price. Uh, so let's go look at and plot momentum here today. So let's say we plot momentum. I believe we have it. So momentum. Oh, we don't have momentum. That's weird. I'm surprised we don't have momentum. I'm, I am actually surprised that we don't have momentum here. That's weird. Okay, let's go look at another place where we can plot momentum. We can do it on Yahoo. Um, let's see Yahoo. Okay, let's go to Yahoo here. Sorry. Okay, let's go to Yahoo here and we'll plot the momentum. Okay, so right here, I was going to plot it on BBY. And why is it not coming up? Okay, so I'll add momentum so I can go to indicators. And I will go add momentum. Let's see here, momentum, momentum, oh, a momentum indicator, there you go. So they are priced on period 14, we'll just say 10, for example and say save. Okay, so this is your momentum. Well, guess what? It's plotting it along the zero line and the momentum is positive, which would be expected because the stock is moving up. Again, this is a weekly chart, so you can expect that. So let's do a daily chart and look at what the momentum, and look at the momentum. It's just moving above the zero line. So it's been sort of negative and now it's moving up. And this is 
almost a very close to a breakout okay guys so i really like the stock i think this can go higher um primarily i'll tell you why they sell appliances also right and new home uh, buying is on the rise so people are buying electronics tvs routers uh, appliances refrigerators all this stuff is happening at that time so i believe this stock should do well if whirlpool did well i can't imagine that best buy is not going to do well either so look at whirlpool stock i was waiting to buy it i didn't buy it i made a mistake of not buying it and you can see uh, let's look at it on two charts um okay this is the report let's look at two uh, whr here which is a symbol for whirlpool and you can see whirlpool has been going up straight up right still going up and all because of housing nothing else but housing okay so let's look at that and i was briefly showing the gap up reports so let's look at that so the way you look at this is okay so here are the gap ups ibio gap up acst gap up roku was a gap up so you can see this is a great stock right look it gapped up nice volume um this one gapped up i wouldn't buy it so so on and so forth so you can run this report on your own you have don't have to uh, you know, um, hunt it down. We have the option to allow you to run this report and find the answer. So here's another one. This was an interesting stock. I don't know what they do. Mednax, uh, maybe they got bought out or something, but it gapped up really nicely. You can see it was up five dollars. Um, maybe we can check the news and find out what they do. MD. Let's see what they do. So 2.7 billion is their market cap. Price to sales is pretty cheap, not an expensive stock. What is their PE? PE is, um, I don't even think they have a PE. That's not applicable. Um, let's see what they do. Together provides newborn, maternal, fetal, pediatric, cardiology, and specialty care service in the United States and Puerto Rico. Okay, so it, it's a good stock. I don't know, maybe their earnings went up. That's why, okay, so that's, you can see the earnings here, okay? They missed, they did good earnings and beat estimates. Okay, so anyway, that's what I had uh, primarily for today. So momentum we talked about. Again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, hopefully you're learning something from all these videos. We'll try to go an indicator a week uh, and we'll go through the indicators and, and show you how to use those uh, and what are the best indicators so we can form a list of the best indicators, okay? Um, and then... This is our subscription plan, and I want to briefly show you uh, an amazing feature coming to our site. Uh, let's see, I think I had it here. Where did it go? Let's see here. Um, yep, here it is. Um, I'll show you this amazing feature we are going to have on our site. It's coming, so keep an eye on it. We are very, very close. Very, very close. This is what our new site is going to look like. And we have an amazing other feature. Look at this feature. You can do all kinds of indicators here. Okay. You can write text. This is another indicator. And this is our chart with our algorithms also. So both of them are available. You can click here and it'll update the chart here. And also in trading view, you can go and see it. Not a problem. You can update here. It updates the chart here. And amazing feature. And then this you can zoom in and zoom out. Okay. This is what we are bringing to the table, folks. So uh, be ready. Uh, hopefully, uh, we should see this very soon. And again, uh, so um, let me finish with my presentation. So we have a subscription plan. It's $20 a month for all these features, but it's going to go to $30 with the, once you join Trade Year. And again, I want to thank you for watching. Click, click subscribe and then also subscribe to our site. You'll get some amazing real-time charts, real-time quotes. Very powerful screeners. Truly, I think we have some of the best screeners on the market and some very uh, amazing backtest features that nobody else offers. So um, I look forward to uh, speaking to you next week and having a new video. And again, take care and have a great trading week. Okay, thanks. Bye.